So welcome back. First notes of the year and they will be fairly simple. The first section that we're doing is solving systems of equations by elimination. Um, this you did in Algebra 1. Just been a while so we're going to do a little bit of review. Okay. So <clears throat> this is with two variable systems meaning you have an X and a Y or you have an A and a B. Okay. So um, best method for solving by elimination. I actually think elimination is much easier than substitution, but we will do some practice in class with substitution also. Write the system so that both variables are aligned, meaning you want to have your x's and y's lined up with each other. Okay. And then you're going to eliminate one of the variables and solve for the other. Plug the value in of the variable into one of the original equations and solve for the other variable. This should all be coming back to you from Algebra 1. Write the values of the variables. Wow. Variables as a, as a coordinate point or an ordered pair. Okay and check to be sure as a solution for each equation. So that means you're always going to be looking for this. Like we talked about in class, systems of equations either have one solution, no solution, or an infinite number of solutions. Um, you'll be able to see that when you're solving them algebraically as well. Okay, so the first thing we look at, do my x's cancel out? No, they don't. I have x and 5x if I were to add them together. Do my y's cancel out? Well, negative 2y plus 2y is indeed 0, so they do cancel out. So I don't have to adjust these two equations at all. They're ready to go just as they are. So I'm going to cancel those out. x plus 5x is 6x. Negative 19 plus 1 is negative 18. Then you're just solving for x. Elimination is actually a much quicker method most of the time than substitution, which is one of the reasons I prefer it. Now that we've solved for x, remember that you are always solving for a coordinate point, which means you must have both parts of that point solved for. Now that you have a solution for x, you can plug it into one or both. Both would be better to double check your answer. <coughs> but you can choose whichever equation you would like to solve for the other. So I'm going to use the first equation. So instead of x, now I have negative 3 minus 2y equals negative 19. I'm going to move that 3 to the other side by addition. So now I get negative 16, so y equals 8. So my coordinate point should be negative 3, 8. Now, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to plug both of my x and y coordinates into the second. Since I used the first equation to find y, I'm going to use the second equation to double check my answer. So I would have 5 times negative 3 plus 2 times 8 equals 1. Did I do that right? 5 times negative 3 plus 2 times 8 should equal 1. Yes, so I have negative 15 plus 16 should equal 1, and it indeed does, so that is my correct answer. So, for number 1, your answer should be negative 3, 8. Okay? Um, number 2. So, go ahead and same process. Do your x's cancel out? They don't. You have 3 minus 2. That gives you an answer of 1. So canceled out means when you're adding, they must come to 0. 4 and 4 don't cancel out, but they could pretty easily cancel out if we multiply them by negative 1. One of those equations by negative 1. So if I were to multiply this entire equation by negative 1, then I would get 2x minus 4y equals negative 8. Okay, so this becomes this by multiplying that. So now I'm just going to pull that first equation down so I kind of have everything where I need it to be. Okay, and then you're on to the next step. So now you've got, so I want you to kind of understand, this is my new set of equations. Okay, so I get 5x, my y's cancel out, 18 minus 8 is 10, so x equals 2. Now I'm going to choose one of those equations. I'll go ahead and choose the top one. 3 times 2 plus 4y equals 18. 4y is going to equal 12 because I'm subtracting that 6 from both sides. 
so y equals 3. So my answer should be 2, 3. I'm going to go ahead and double check it in my second equation. You actually could double check it in this equation as well. It should work in all of these. And so I have negative 2 times 2 plus 4 times 3 should equal 8. So I get negative 4 plus 12 equals 8, and that is indeed true, so my answer is correct. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Sometimes you have to actually manipulate your equations to get them to cancel out the way you need them to. So, for example, in number 3, if I'm looking at that, I can say, okay, well, do my x's cancel out? No, they don't. Do my y's cancel out? No, they don't either. Neither one of them cancel. So you just now have to make a decision which variable do you want to eliminate first. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the x's first. It doesn't matter. You're solving for both, so it really does not matter. So now I need to find a number. My coefficients here are 5 and 2. So I want to know a number that they both can go into. The easiest way to do that is multiply them together. So I know that 10x they both go into but I need one of those to be negative. So I'm now going to decide what I have to multiply these by in order to get them to become this. So this first equation I need to multiply by 2. 2 times 5x gives me 10x. This second equation, 2, I need to multiply by negative 5 in order for it to become negative 10x. So now you're just going to multiply those equations and rewrite your new equations down there. So you should get 10x. I kind of like writing where you need to go to first. I think of it as a map you know you need to get here. Here's your start point. How do I get to here from my beginning point? What do I need to multiply those equations by? What do I need to manipulate them by to get them to be this? So, it's negative 56. <coughs> Excuse me. Negative 10x plus 10y equals 60. Okay? Now you have new equations that now will cancel out nicely and you can go ahead and solve. So negative 4y equals 4, so y equals negative 1. Now you actually have 1, 2, 3, 4 choices of equations to plug that into. Doesn't matter, it will work for all of them. So I'm just going to pick the top one because that's the easiest. It's the first one, so um, 5x minus 7 times negative 1 is our y value equals negative 28. So I've got 5x uh, plus 7 equals negative 28. Then I need to move over that 7. So I have 5x equals negative 35 and x is going to equal negative 7. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and use you can really use any of these equations to double check. I'm just going to go ahead and use the second one. So you would have 2 times negative 7 minus 2 times negative 1 should equal negative 12. We get ne negative 14 plus 2 equals negative 12, and that is indeed correct. So negative 7, negative 1 is our correct answer. So now I'd like you to do example 4 on your own, and then come back and check your work against mine. Okay, so for number 4, I got an answer of 3, negative 4. There's my work there if you need to check. I also went ahead, I used the first um, equation to solve for my y once I had found x, and then I used the second equation as my check. You can again use any of those that you want. So, okay, that's a quick review on solving two, system, two variable systems. We will do more practice in class for sure, and then we will uh, move on to three variable systems. Okay, we will also go over substitution a little bit in class two. Once in a while, substitution is helpful. Um, I do think elimination is kind of the preferred method. So, all right, so on to three variable systems. Okay, so just like you were dealing with in geometry, you would have a square, right? That's a two-dimensional object. So when we have systems with two variables, they're two-dimensional. When you have a three-dimensional system in geometry, now you're dealing with a cube. If we look at that algebraically, now you're dealing with systems with three variables. And the graphs go along with that too. <coughs> so, if you only had two of these rectangles here, you would be dealing with a system where 
they have no solution. They're parallel lines, they do not touch, they don't intersect anywhere at all, right? Or, uh, but now you've got three of those, three dimensional, you have three situations, but they still are all parallel to one another, they never intersect, okay? <clears throat> here and here you would have, there are many, many solutions to those systems because of how many times they come in contact with one another. This that you're seeing at the bottom of your notes is a, um, where you've got an intersection of the three, but they only intersect each other at one in one plane. So they still only have, their only options are zero, one, or infinite many solutions. Um, we often get asked, why do we use systems with three variables? This is a business model. Businesses all the time use um, what they call linear programming, which is a visual representation of three uh, different scenarios, three at least, sometimes there's more scenarios when they're deciding what, how much of a product they need to make or how many people they need to hire or whatever in order to um, maximize their profit or minimize their cost. So uh, they definitely use this algebraic method in order to figure that out. So, okay, so let's see how we do this. And I want you to understand that when you're doing these types of problems, you need room to work these. And I want you to kind of think of a um, pattern. So what I usually, how I explain it, is you're going from three variables. You've got three variables in these systems, right? I want you to get down to two variables, then one. Then you're going to plug back in and solve for two, and then finally plug back in and solve for the third. So it's kind of a upside down pyramid going back to a pyramid kind of format. And I just want you to kind of have that visually in your head. Okay, so what you want to do first is you want to use two of the two equations and eliminate a variable. Okay. And you're going to do that step twice using two. You have to use a different combination of equations. So sometimes what I do is I'll number my equations, one, two, and three. And then I'll just decide which variable I'm going to eliminate and which two I'm going to use first. <coughs> so first one I'm going to do is one and two, okay? <coughs> and I'm going to put, so first I'm going to do one and two, okay? So one and two, I've got two x plus y minus z equals five. And I've got three x minus y plus two z equals negative one. So now if I look at those two equations, what I need to look at is there any variable that's automatically canceling out for me? Because if there is, that's the one you wanna use. It's making life easy on you. So which variable would that be? The x's, the y's, or the z's? Well, when I combine these two equations, those y's are going to eliminate. So I've now decided that y is the first variable that I'm going to solve for, okay? Y is what I'm eliminating first. So now I'm gonna add these together and I'll get five x, those cancel out, negative two z plus z plus two z is z, and then five minus one is four. So now look what we've come up with. Now we have a two variable system, <coughs> excuse me, two variable equation, just like we have back on this page. If we can get down to a two variable system, things are looking good for us. So once we do that, we can do that again. Now the only other thing we need is we need another, another equation to go along with this one. So now I'm gonna do that same step again, but I have to use two different, I can't use one and two again. I can use one and three. Here are your options. One and two, one and three, two and three. Those are your options in the three variable system, okay? So now I'm gonna look and see, well I already used one, but I notice that if I use three, if I go one and three, I have positive y and negative y again. So I'm not gonna have to multiply my equations if I do that. So one and three, I'm gonna use. And one is two x plus y minus z equals five. And the third equation, it's x minus y minus z equals zero. So because I chose two equations that already had, this is not gonna happen all the time, but in this case, you know, we're working our way into this, we are able to choose um, sets of equations that we don't have to multiply anything by. So we're gonna add these two equations together now, and I get two x plus x is three x, y minus y eliminates, that's what we want, negative z minus z 
is negative 2z, and then 5 plus 0 is 5. Now I'm going to use these two equations that I have here, so here and here, to set up a system similar that you had on the first part of the notes. Okay? Now we're getting into our two variable area here. So let me just get things straightened out a little bit. Good. So I'm going to go ahead and use 5x plus z equals 4 and 3x minus 2z equals 5. Okay? Now I have to go back and ask myself those questions that I did in the two variable systems. Do my x's cancel out? No. Do my z's cancel out? No. But they could fairly easily. So what's the opposite of negative 2? Well, that would be 2. So if I multiply this entire equation by 2 and just put it right down here, I will have two, two uh, sets of equations that I can pretty easily work with. So 2 times 5x is 10x. 2 times z would be 2z. And 2 times 4 would be 8. Okay. Now I'm just going to solve this equation. So I've got 13x. That's going to go away. I have 13, so x equals 1. So I have now already solved for one of my variables. So now you see we went from three variables to two variables to one. This is kind of what I'm talking about with my... Um, this was now the first thing that we solved for. Now, because in my two variable systems I had an x and a z, now I can work my way back up the chain. Okay. First thing we've eliminated was y's. Then we eliminated the disease. Then we solve for x. Now we're going to do that same pattern, and now we're going to solve for z, and y will be the last thing that we solve for. <coughs> you notice they're not in alphabetical order. They don't have to be. It just happens to be whichever variable you eliminate first is going to be the last one that you solve for. So now I'm going to plug this back into, I'm going to go ahead and use that 5x plus z equals 4. So 5 times 1 plus z equals 4. And I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, so z equals negative 1. Now I've got two variables taken care of. Okay. Now you're saying, well, now, Ms. V, how am I going to solve the y? Because I don't have any y's here. Now this is where you move back up to your three variable systems. Any of these equations will work plugging x and z in and solving for y. So you have three choices, right? You have the equation 1, 2, or 3. So I'm, because 1 is the only one that has a positive y isolated, I'm using that one. I want as little work as I have to do as possible. So I'm going to take 2x plus y minus z equals 5, and now I'm going to plug in my x value and my y value. Or sorry, excuse me, my x value and my z values to solve for y. So 2 times 1 plus y minus negative 1 equals 5. Okay? So 2 plus y plus 1 equals 5. I've got a total of 3 there that I need to subtract here. So y equals 2. And the way that you write your answers for these is you write them as three coordinate points in alphabetical order. So our x, so that would be your x, comma y, comma z. So in this case, you would have 1, 2, and negative 1. Okay? So that is going to be your final answer right there. You see, if you keep this really organized, then you can do these problems in, you know, about this much space, but you need to keep them really super organized. Um, and you should be able to go back and check your answers here with all of these variables. So let's go ahead and do that. So since we used this one to find our answer, let's just check the second two. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus our y value of 2, plus 2 times z, which is negative 1, so that would be negative 2, equals negative 1. Well, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, so that one's good. So we're good with that one. <coughs> Let's do it again for number 3. So 1 minus 2 minus negative 1 would be 1, equals 0, and 2 minus 2, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm not sure where that cut off or why that cut off, but okay, so uh, on the second example here, um, I would like you to go ahead and work through, and I'm going to give you a hint that I think you should eliminate your z's first. So when you're setting up your initial problems here, I'm going to give you the hint to set up that and eliminate your z's first. So look at the steps we did on example one. 
see if you can do this one independently and if not go back and look at the help on the first part of the video and then come back and check your work here okay um, and then come back and check your answers so I'm coming back to you a little sooner than I said I went ahead and I set up that I was going to eliminate use the 1 and 2 and then 1 and 3 1 and 2 is fine I got 3x plus 2y equals 15 then look what happened when I came to the 1 and 3 just worked out that both the y and the z values canceled so now all I have left is an 6x equals 18 that actually makes life a lot easier because now you don't even have to um, get down to the point where you need to do that second step so that's one of your answers there okay so now that we know that you can actually plug in to two of these equations you have a value for that x variable which means that now you don't have unknowns here so let's take equation one okay and plug in what we know now we know that x has a value of three so two times three minus y plus z equals four okay well that's six and all I need to do is move that to the other side so I would get negative y plus z equals negative two so there's one equation that we can use we're going to hang on to him for a second now let's go to the second equation and our x value again is three plus three y minus z equals 11. This 3, I just need to move to the other side so that the only variables I've got going on here are y and z, so I'm going to subtract 3. So I have 3y minus z equals 8. Well now look what I've got here. I've got two equations, they only have a y and a z, and luckily when I stack them on top of each other, look what happens to our z, z variable. It is going to cancel each other out. So this one was actually quite a bit easier than the first one. So 2y equals 6 and y equals 3. So I've got my x and my y. And remember what we said, whatever the first variable is that you eliminate, that's the last one that you're solving for. And that is in fact what's going on. So now you can use any of those equations. I'm going to use number 3 because we haven't used him a whole lot and you don't want him to be jealous. So for our x value is 3 plus our y value is 3 minus z equals 14. That would give us 12 plus 3, which is 15, minus z equals 14. And uh, I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. So negative z equals negative 1, which means that z equals 1. So my answer should be 3, 3, 1. And we can go ahead and double check. We've already used that last one to double check, so let's double check the top two. So we'd have two times three, which is six, minus our y value is three, plus one should equal four. Six minus three is three, plus one equals four, so that is correct. And then let's check the middle. X is three, three times our y value is nine, minus our z value is 1 and that should equal 11 so we have 3 plus 9 is 12 minus 1 is 11 so that also checks out so this is as well a good answer okay good so uh, that's for elimination we will be doing quite a bit of practice on this in class in, on Wednesday and Thursday so if you feel like you're still shaky you should feel like that you won't be as shaky by the end of the day Wednesday and Thursday Okay, so let's go to substitution method. So what substitution method is really saying is that you are doing exactly that. You're isolating a variable, okay? You're isolating a variable and substituting it into the other equations. Okay, so the easiest one to me to isolate would be in our first equation because we have x minus 3y plus z equals 6. And because x has no coefficient or has a coefficient of 1 as well as z, either one of those you could use. Let's just go ahead and use x. So what you're going to do is to isolate that x minus 3y plus z equals 6. You want everything but the x to move to the other side. And when it moves to the other side, of course, it switches signs. Okay, so x equals 3y minus z, I'm oh, sorry, plus, that's a plus, 6. Now that value can get plugged in wherever you see an x. 
and by default it's going to eliminate that third variable and now you're back down to two variables again. Okay, so let's do this one first. So 2 times 3y minus z plus 6 minus 5y minus z equals negative 2. So the only thing that's getting plugged in here is for the x value. Then we've got to tack the rest of the negative 5y minus z minus 2 on to the end. And then you're just combining like terms and simplifying. This is not my preferred method. I don't think that this is an easier method than elimination. Once in a while it's going to be useful if you have variables that are kind of given to you. So that would be 6y minus 2z plus 12 minus 5y minus z equals negative 2. Now we're going to combine our y's. So we get y there. Negative 2z minus z is negative 3z. And then that 12 needs to come over to the other side. So it's going to be subtract 12 equals negative 14. So that's one of my new equations. Okay. To me, this is much more cumbersome. What I don't like in general about substitution, <coughs> well, I don't think it's as useful a tool. I think that because there are so many more steps, one, two, three, then combining like terms, every single step is a chance to you know, m mess up a sign, not remember to multiply something out. It's, every, it's more of an opportunity to make just a silly math mistake, whereas I think elimination is a little bit more straightforward. That's just my opinion on that. You can certainly choose whichever system is going to work for you the best, okay, whichever method. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing with this one and plug in 4x negative the value of x, 3y minus z plus 6 plus y plus 2z equals 7. So then we would get flip all those signs, negative 3y plus z minus 6 plus y plus 2z equals 7. <coughs> so I get negative 3y plus y would be negative 2y. <coughs> z plus 2z is 3z. And then that negative 6 needs to go over to the other side as a positive. So now I've got two, <coughs> two equations that now only have two variables that I can use. y minus 3z equals negative 14, negative 2y plus 3z, the nice thing is they're going to cancel out, equals 13. Okay? So now you can go ahead and just solve, and you'll see what's happening. Again, we're going from three variables to two, and now you're going to go to one and then back up, plug in to find the second one, plug in to find the third. Okay, so you'd have negative y, those are going to eliminate, equals negative one, so y equals one. So there's one of your answers. Now I can plug that y into one of these two equations, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna go ahead and use the bottom one. Negative two times one plus three z equals 13. Um, so that would be negative 2, so I need to move that to the other side. So I get 3z equals 15, so z equals 5. Now I've got y solved for, z solved for. x was the first thing that we isolated. Now we need to come back and plug that in. You can use that to plug it in. You can use any of these equations to plug it in. But since that's already isolated out, let's use that. So x equals 3 times our y value is 1 minus our z value is 5 plus 6, so we get 3 minus 5 plus 6, so 3 plus 6 is 9, minus 5 is 4, so your answer at the end should be 4, 1, and 5. Okay, that's all the notes for today. We will definitely be doing more practice in class. This definitely will be on your test for this unit. So more practice is necessary, and we'll see you then. Thanks.